Hey guys, so back for another video, Alchemy 7, and I'm like, I'm blown away. Like, yeah, just how it's all been unfolding. <clears throat> and so many mysterious, miraculous, perfect, <laughs> in full ways. And uh, I got my good share of challenges and lessons and opportunities and gifts this week. Like, totally all of it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been beautiful, amazing, ugly, terrible, wonderful. Like, all of it. And it's been hard, but it's been graceful. It's felt really tough. Yeah. It's felt tough, but, like, bearable, too, in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's, an, it's just been an interesting mixed bag, really. So yeah, the last, um, this last week, and yeah, had its challenges and its gifts and opportunities, and I feel like it, it was great. It was a great time to reset too, and um, to redirect, yeah. And so, kind of opened up, <clears throat> like, some more reception with stepping back, and yeah, stepping out of the pattern that I was in. And that was like, yeah, just kind of asking for help to do that and uh, and then getting out of my own way and letting, yeah, and letting um, the universe help me with that and and Coyote, the trickster, um, pop up and help me with some, some of that and see where I was kind of misdirecting my energy and, um, what that was creating for me and yeah and I was aware of some of it too but yeah I got to see some more of it some more into it and so yeah um just yeah being on my phone all the time is ceasing to work for me and then yeah there's other things that I want to create and focus on and um, put my energy and my attention and you know creativity into and so, yeah, there's like lots of little things that were popping up, um, showing me different things about how, like, it was hijacking my energy and like how it was feeding into an old pattern and, and that kind of a thing. And like, I wasn't judging myself for it. I was just like kind of observing. I'm like, yeah, that's probably one of the things that's more shifted in a, in a little bit is like, um, just kind of more observing from a, from a detached um, place or more impersonal type of lens yeah viewing certain things that come up in my space that way instead of like all of it taken personally or like activating that survival control strategy mechanisms or programs and those kinds of things like yeah like really taking back responsibility for my emotions my energy it was really really good practice to see like all of those triggers come up um, initially with and I got like such good lessons um, and got to understand where some of the trauma or some of the <clears throat> you know where some trauma can activate certain old wounds or wounded aspects that haven't been fully integrated yeah and looking into that seeing more deeply into all that and so it's been yeah really illuminating <laughs> it's been illuminating and every june it seems like you know as the eclipse seasons kind of uh, initiate us into new yeah, ways of being and new ways of operating and uh, integrating, transforming things. It seems like I'm always reminded to make the room, to make the room. And it's funny, yeah, where it is the peak of summer right now and where summer is always abundant and there's always things growing and being fertilized and being harvested in the summertime, like where there's so much creative energy so a lot there's a lot of momentum and um, focus is important for those intentions and 
the reception of that energy, yeah, of what we're creating, what we're co-creating. And yeah, and if we're not making the room, yeah, for certain things to be, then we're not able to work with them fully or allow them fully so that they can become what they will be, what they can be, what they shall be, you know, and we have a, a part to play in that. So it's like make the room. So I'm always reminded, like make the room for it to be. And I've gotten some good personal and impersonal lessons with that um, in my space, courtesy of Coyote Trickster and like in the universe because I asked. <laughs> I asked for it. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just kind of funny how things pop up when, and, you know, like we can either meet them and be receptive or, yeah, they can take us on a little detour until, yeah, until we are ready to be, become more receptive and listen to the signals and, and trust, yeah, trust our own perceptions <clears throat> in our own direction, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of synchronicities with the snake and with, yeah, wisdom. So the snake is a symbol of wisdom and also deception. And so, yeah. It reminds me of the downward spiral and the upward spiral and both are needed, you know, for creation. Um, and the same force that liberates is the same force that binds. And like, I figured I'd get out some toys because I was also remained, reminded that it's like, it's all about play and just wake up and play, be present to the play. It's all these energies at play and yeah, and they just want to play, so just play, like play back instead of fight back or, you know, attack back or just play back. See it as a play. See these energies at play. And yeah, how are we playing? <laughs> how are we playing ourselves? And how are we fooling ourselves? And remembering that, yeah, like it's okay to be the fool. And we're always fooling ourselves, so it's like part of <laughs> part of discovery and part of the journey. And awakening is always a continuous process. It's awakening to ourselves. And so there's not one, you know, one awakening that we go through. It's a continuous process. It's continuity. And it's the choice, you know, to tune in and be present and be aware and be willing, yeah. We don't always have to understand everything, just show up and be here. And so like, there's always magic and it's always, yeah, it always is. It's just waiting for our reception, our perception <laughs> and our engagement, you know, and our playback. So, um, yeah, my little toys, like, the same force that expands is the same force that contracts. Yeah. And so it's like, also I've been using a lot of metaphors this week. Um, I always use like the garden as a metaphor for life, you know, because it's our garden and we're the gardeners and we're the, we're the garden that's growing. And so we're all that. And so it's kind of funny, like how we just get to attend and yeah, nourish and feed like what we want to see and what we want to grow and who we want to be. And like, yeah, sometimes certain conditions aren't ideal or optimal, but like that doesn't mean that we don't have a lot to work with and a lot of resources to employ, a lot of resources to call on and like um, a lot of support to draw from. And so there's all that to, yeah, <laughs> to look at. and from the elements like to our actual space that we make to have or to grow or to plant or to attend, you know, to our energy, to the beauty, to the gifts that are growing in the garden. And so, um, 
there's that. And how do we make use of our compost? How do we see our crops? Don't we know that they're connected? That the crops come from the compost and then the crops will return to the compost to grow and to harvest and to start a new cycle of growth and change and yeah, all of that again and again and again. And so, yeah, sometimes it's hard to know where to begin and it's just like breathe, begin again, <laughs> start where we are, you know, like, and that's a little tricky too because we're, oh, yeah, sometimes we don't know where we are. So it's reorientation and re-navigation or navigation, re the navigation and resources, source is, sources resource is sources is <laughs> so like what is what do we have to work with what is yeah and so like if we're not allowing what is fully if we're not fully allowing what is then we we don't have access to yeah calling on all of our resources and like if we don't call on like the compo the compost like how can we claim like what's growing in in the garden bud and so it's like yeah claim the mess and the yes and like yeah work with all of it and work with all the shit all the fertilizer and yeah that we get to work with that we get to play with that we get to build with yeah nourish yeah and and redirect grow with it's all how we make use of it it's it's a tool like there's tools we have and we get to decide whether we're digging a grave for ourselves, whether we're building a home, whether we're building, you know, something that contributes to a full home or that excludes. And separates and negates and dishonors the fullness. Yeah of what we have to work with and what we've been given. And so, yeah, uh, there's that on a lot of levels. Um, and the snake with the, yeah, it's been huge on my mind with the wisdom and knowledge and how that wisdom and knowledge can liberate or it can bind or what it's, you know, how it's directed. Um, it can be poison, it can be the anti-venom, it can be nectar, it can be what saves us, you know, it's all in the way that it's directed, it's all in the way that it's perceived, received, integrated, honored, and allowed to be. So it can be fertilizer, or it can be something that is acidic and that strips yeah everything <laughs> from it which that's not a bad thing either sometimes we need to be stripped of all the layers like to come back to simplicity and to what's the core you know of our essence our truth like without all the stories without all the descriptions without all the agendas without all the programs, without all the interference. Yeah. And so it's good to reset and uh, repattern and reorient. And yeah, part of that was um, going in and deciding to choose to welcome in like what I wanted to offer, what I wanted to receive, focus on give, show up and be, and yeah, an honor to celebrate and uh, kind of hold the space to be, and yeah, welcome in that well-being. And uh, I got to schedule like an art class for the end of the month, so I'm excited I get to do that, like the pouring, pouring class at the art studio. And I also got to schedule and hold a space for a summer solstice circle this last weekend on Sunday 
and that was freaking amazing and I'm so glad that I got to do that and I just got out of my own way and I said I'd like to I'd like to be able to do this and hold this and offer this and receive this um, and I know like yeah the others were interested so I, it made me like really want to make the effort to hold the space for it to be and so I just kind of put it out there yes I'm willing to do this it doesn't have to be any certain way I knew that I had like totally a lot of resources to call on and draw from and everything like for it to unfold and just be whatever it got to be and so just freeing up the energy and uh, welcoming like that and um, showing up for my part sending out the invites and uh, just being willing to like uh, see what could grow from that and asking calling in for support um, my husband's like it's such a great great beautiful main core ally and support in my life and he's always like supportive of all that I want to create and all that I want to um, generate and offer give be and share and so yeah he always helps me like yeah get all the preparations with that like yeah spruce up the house which it felt like amazing to be able to like yeah do a little bit of like spring cleaning kind of like yeah uh dust out the old and to, to welcome in the new and yeah freshen up the whole space and it just like it does change everything and it helps make the room too like i knew like yeah doing that would help like open up some space for creativity to bloom and for the space like to come together because it's yeah it always does in such magical ways and in such perfect ways creative yeah and fun so playful ways and uh, yeah so it's always yeah so so much abundance and so like just having all this beautiful abundance and the, and the food and the sun tea that I got to make that got to sit in the sunshine and <laughs> and like yeah just uh, being thankful for the, the water and the sunlight and like all the plants and the herbs and like what life and well-being and vitality and gifts and reciprocal exchange and like the magic of just um, everything being a part of everything and how they all how it all works together like how life and how love and how this light this and dark like creative force works together and yeah to generate life and to contribute to life and to just be life, to express itself for itself, for its joy and the giving of itself. That's the expression, you know, that's this. And that helps remind me too, like that's what it's all about. It's about wild living energies and in the expression and like that warmth and that light and that joy and just for being like unselfconsciousness. And so, there's a lot of that, and you know, there's a lot to look into there and into that. So and it's all about fertility, her fertility. It's just so much. All the symbolism of summer and all the abundance of summer and like where we put our focus. There's so many cool things that have to do with the sun. You have to do with the lens that we're using, our focus and the magician you know, the elements and our command, you know, like our intentions. Yeah, and part of that is making room. So, yeah, some of the colors, you know, yellow for the sun and red, red for fire. And, you know, and there's also green because green is the light of the earth, the mother. And she's a reflection of the light of the heavens. So green and full swing, that's the light of the earth. And so um, Venus and Mother Earth, Gaia, the Mother, Fertility, the Triple Goddess. Yeah, the Goddesses Ascent and the Descent. Um, all this magic, yeah, it's been on my mind. Um, a lot of different myths have come up, a lot of different uh, medicine allies, totems have been sharing their gifts and messages with me to help me 
um, yeah, to help me integrate the things that are asking me for inclusivity and for healing and for reclamation and honoring. Yeah. And so, um, to be more full, to honor the fullness and to, to live in harmony, to embody that harmony. Like, yeah. So that's kind of, yeah, what's, what, what I've been working with and what I've been choosing. And it hasn't been like a totally graceful dance, but it's been like, it's been authentic, you know? And it, uh, whatever, however it may look from the surface of things, from superficial judgments or assumptions, like, believe me, it's always more than that. It always is. And like, so that's uh, freeing to let go of like how other people maybe have been viewing me or if I, and how I have been maybe worrying about yeah, what lens they're viewing me through and from, you know, all of that. I've had like lots of dreams this week, the last two weeks actually, like that I've been paying attention to recording. And it totally, there's so many synchronicities about um, the wounds that have been activated in the last, yeah, two weeks for me uh, that I've been working through and integrating and um, welcoming uh, understanding. I'm willing to understand and just, yeah, willing to meet with love and reception the best I can, like, for me. And letting go of agendas and, yeah, my own expectations about how it's supposed to be. And so, um, I want to share a little bit about the Empress <clears throat> key three because she keeps popping up for me in threes and fours. Three and fours have been huge. I mean, um, yeah, just a lot of things that relate so many ways. But the Empress key three in the tarot, um, the mother, fertility, the life force, like she is everything. Yeah, and I, I have this card that I, that I have in front of me that says, I am the fertile mother, my number is three, I am the one and three simultaneously, I hold all things, all is held within me, as I am held within all things, I love all my children and pray they be free, let all who desire to come unto me, I am here for us all, the mother deep, I hold our, all you are, I hold you in me, I hold you in love, deep sanctuary, it's mother deep. And so, um, she kept popping up for me, and so I decided to pick up my book uh, by Leigh J. McCloskey, Leigh J. McCloskey, and I flipped open To this little part here and I just want to read like a little bit <clears throat> the Empress symbolizes the mother of creation both imminent and transcendent she is the primordial nexus between the ever knowable darkness and luminous light the nimbus behind her head represents the passageway through which the Empress emerges as an emanation of the high priestess her head is adorned with a crown of stars radiating and receiving the light of cosmic mind. They are six-pointed, symbolizing her dominion over the laws of the macrocosm. The stars are analogous with the twelve zodiacal signs, their living expression being represented as numinous rays. The twelve stars are symbolic of wholeness, wherein all probability exists. The emanation of each star signifies an archetypal pattern of divine mind converging and flowing out from the singular brilliance behind the head of the Empress. She is one and she is multitudes. She is the great cosmic womb eternally giving birth to being and becoming. She is the prima materia or first matter of all that is, was, or will be. The Empress holds an iris in her right hand consisting of 22 petals. It suggests incohate movement or the potentiality of multiplicity contained within wholeness 
Its petals recount the 22 Hebrew letters attributed to the major arcana of the tarot, symbolizing the archetypal fount from which manifestation draws its animating force to blossom within time. The iris signifies unity, its petals imply division. The petals are also wave patterns representing the tidal forces of time, space, and duration, flowering with an eternal becoming. In the center of the iris is a triangle containing a square that in turn encloses a circle. The triangle represents the eternal trinity of higher mind, soul, and spirit operating within finite and conditioned boundaries represented by the square. The inner circle symbolizes the eternal from whose source all outward form and expression originate. The hem of the empress. Empress's garment modulates into currents and countercurrents flowing gracefully outward, creating numberless streams of potentiality for, consciousness, for consciousness to issue forth as conditioned realities. Transition maintains that all time. <laughs> I can't see you crying. <laughs> yeah, it really touches me like deeply. Like, because this confirms for me, like, what's been coming in for me in a lot of ways, in a lot of symbolic ways. And it's just like getting it on deeper levels and deeper levels of awareness and understanding, like, or comprehension, or maybe just allowing, maybe just allowing it to be revealed and make itself known. So, yeah, that's like. Wow, beautiful part of it, and to know her, to know ourselves, you know? So that's huge, like so huge. And I've got to get a, a tissue. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> that will percolate <laughs> and ferment and like manifest as a beautiful realization, a self-realization for all of us yeah. and the goddess awakening and that we are her and she is we. So we're awakening and <laughs> she's awakening. We're awakening to she and she. She's awakening to we. And how beautiful is that? Like, how beautiful can it be? Like, it already is, so let it be. But so, just letting go of what I think it's supposed to be, what I think I'm supposed to be, what I think she's supposed to be, how I think we're supposed to be, how I think life's supposed to be, and like, yeah, like, letting her be. Letting her be full and free and all she is and all she gets to be, all she will be without um, limiting her and negating her and naming her as one thing when she's all things. And like, yeah, yeah, there's just a lot to that. So allowance and allowing her to be, allowing all she is, allowing all I am, allowing all we are, but like, yeah, still knowing that it's right to set boundaries, to have boundaries, and um, to unify and divide, you know? Yeah, so, and multiply. I just wanna read just a little bit more of this. Tradition maintains that all time is now, the illusory nature of time being the construct of consciousness unfolding within successive states of duration. The petals of the iris, like spokes of a wheel, denote that past and future are relative, existing solely within their own context. From the perspective of the empress, past and future are no more than transitory points of reference. The empress teaches that world civilization forms and incarnated beings follow a cyclical, organic model of inception, growth, decline, death, decay, and rebirth. It is impossible for the infinite 
to ever manifest entirely within manifestation. The Empress represents the ever prolific mother alive with boundless variations on a theme of creative potentiality. The landscape beneath the folds of her dress illumined by the sun represents her life sustaining warmth and nurturing within time. She is called the mother of the sun whose life giving properties are her reflection in time. In the bottom left foregrounds are fields of wheat representing her inexhaustible source of food, not simply for the body, but for the soul as well. Wheat is sacred to the Empress, as are all the olive trees in the midground of the landscape and the cypress trees to the right. The mountains in the distance refer to a willingness to persevere in the quest for wisdom. The right to the right of, of the cypress trees is an ancient stone monument. Its edifice divides the landscape from the seascape. Through its Neolithic entryway are multiple landscapes flowing out as currents or folds in the garment of the Empress. The sacred site represents a portal into other landscapes of time, thought, and being. It symbolizes the doorway connecting heaven and earth, time, and the eternal. Flames emanate from the iris on the right side as motive force. The spirals in the background of the seascape imply incipient patterns for growth. The spiral sky imparts endless probabilities and creative plenitude activated by the flames emanating from the surround of the iris. The seascape symbolizes the waters of creation and the womb from which evolve forms capable of remaining stabilized within a particular signature of time and space. The waters of the seascape are constant and its depth unknowable, which is anag analogous with the empress. The iris on the right has its center has its center a system of roots and suggests the primal materia on the high priestess made manifest. Within and underneath the root, the roots is the all-seeing eye representing the inner perceiver within all that is. The roots grow from the bottom of the staff held in the left hand of the empress. They connect the iris at 22 points, suggesting that from her staff of unity, flows out the 22 archetypal channels represented by the major arcana of the tarot. A snake is entwined around the uppermost part of the staff of the empress, signifying energy, evolution, and motion. The monos hieroglyphica, symbolizing the whole of creation, surmounts her staff. The left leg of the empress forms an angle suggestive of flight. Her foot is touching the puddles of the iris. It is bisected by a waveform band of currents that flow into and out of the iris. The foot astrologically, astrologically, astrologically <laughs> is ruled by Pisces and is attributed to both the tarot, moon, and the hanged man. These archetypes are associated with the collective unconscious or the area of the psyche where the distinction between the self as separate from others begins to dissolve. So let me read that again. These archetypes are associated with the collective unconscious or the area of the psyche where the distinction between the self as separate from others begins to dissolve. In the Taoist tradition, the feet generate movement, the head being a circle which the foot puts into motion. The path is stationary, but the feet propel one along a given course. This is an apt metaphor regarding the setting into motion of the potentiality of the empress. Her path represents the immutability of the eternal within time. The Magus and the High Priestess images <clears throat> utilize an upright infinity symbol that is repeated in the Empress but is now tilted. The upper iris can be considered as eternal ideation pouring forth into the lower iris in a cosmic movement or dance, suggesting the transformation of sublime energies into patterns, principles, and roots, which will form the substructure and the ground necessary for manifestation. And I think it's really cool, too, that this text <laughs> is just happens to be on page 33. <laughs> so key three and it's like the devil three so master number 33 but yeah was, there's a lot to reflect on in there and absorb and many layers yeah many layers in that and so the empress is radiant beauty love and light all energy is a form of her radiance 
Her face is not hidden behind a veil, as was that of the high priestess, for the empress may be seen in all that is true, good, and beautiful, harmonic, and creative. Her loveliness is witnessed in the changing of the seasons and cycles of birth, life, death, and rebirth. Her song is the celestial music of the grand design. The left breast of the empress is bare. Her life-sustaining milk falls like dew upon creation. She is the eternally pregnant mother of creation, gestating and giving birth to infinite worlds within worlds. Under her womb is an upturned crescent moon, suggesting receptivity to the constant pouring forth of life. The Empress, the Empress is the divine Sophia, the imminent and transcendent loving heart of wisdom within all that is. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. I'll ask to see more deeply into that and embody that. Receive that. Free that. Honor that. Be that. <laughs> I am that I am that I am that I am. All that I am. And so, yeah, allowing all that I am that I am, allow all that she is, that we are, that thou art, yeah. So, good lessons in that, and I'll come back with a story about, yeah, how that challenged me this week, and, yeah, some of the struggles and the pain that I, and the growing pains, yeah, that I've been going through, and the pop quizzes that Coyote <laughs> gifted me. Yeah, but I'll, I'll go ahead and stop it here before this gets too long. And thanks for listening. And yeah, be well. Ciao.